So we increasingly know that autism is lifelong and we know very little about what happens to autistic people as they reach middle age and the elderly years of their life. So the background to this study is that we essentially wanted to start providing some knowledge around the sorts of somatic health outcomes that autistic people face as they reach the later years of their lives. So this was a cohort study, which means that we followed a group of autistic people past the age of 45 and compared the proportion of those people who were diagnosed with somatic conditions with the proportion of non-autistic people who were diagnosed with these conditions after age 45. So we did this using registry data in Sweden. So in Sweden, lots of information is recorded about the population in different registers. And one of these is the National Patient Register. So the National Patient Register records all specialist health care that people living in Sweden receive. So what we did was we used the National Patient Register to identify people who were aged over 45 and had at some point in their life been diagnosed with autism. So this gave us just over 5,000 people who were aged over 45 and had been diagnosed with autism at some point in their life. We then followed them past the age of 45 to see if they were diagnosed with 39 different somatic conditions, which were conditions that are known to be able to onset in later periods of life, including things like cardiovascular diseases and respiratory diseases. We then repeated the analyses separately for autistic people with intellectual disability to see if they were at an even greater likelihood of having somatic conditions after the age of 45. The key finding is that we found that autistic people were more likely to be diagnosed with 15 out of the 39 different conditions we looked at after the age of 45. The strongest association was with anemia and iron deficiency. So autistic people were more than three times more likely to be diagnosed with anemia or iron deficiency than non-autistic people. And of the other conditions they were more likely to be diagnosed with, these included things like heart failure, cerebrovascular disorder, asthma and COPD and visual impairment and hearing loss. And we also found that they were more likely to have accidents and to um, pick up injuries after the age of 45 as well. When we looked at the results separately for autistic people who were also diagnosed with intellectual disability, we were quite surprised to see that there wasn't much difference in the associations. So autistic people with intellectual disability were not particularly more likely to be diagnosed with somatic conditions after age 45 than autistic people without a diagnosis of intellectual disability. This could be because of something we call survivor bias in epidemiology. So it could be that we just simply haven't included autistic people with intellectual disability past this age, potentially because they're more likely to pass away before this age, but also because they might not get diagnosed with these conditions earlier on in life as well. So we bring together two quite under-researched topics in this study. So the first is on the subject of what happens later in life to autistic people and also somatic health. So we know that younger autistic people are more likely to have somatic health problems. And this extends that research into the later periods of life, so middle age and the elderly years of life. And we know extremely little about the somatic health of older autistic people. So this is really important for uh, clinicians to help plan the sorts of care that autistic people might need for their somatic health as they get older, but also it's likely that many people who are autistic and are older are living undiagnosed because you're less likely to get diagnosed if you're a bit older. So it's also helpful for when older people who are autistic are discovered and are diagnosed to help clinicians know what kind of support they might need with their somatic health as well. The next step in this research is to better understand why autistic people are more likely to have somatic conditions as they get older. That's the key thing now. There's so little known about this topic that we're still at the stage where we just need to know which conditions they're more likely to get. And now we're starting to build up this knowledge, we can start moving on to why is this the case? And there's a number of different factors we can think about. For example, we can think about how autistic people's mental health impacts on their somatic health. But also we need to think also about how difficulties in accessing healthcare also contribute to these somatic conditions as well. So these are all important next steps in this research.